Well, I want to talk about the uh, advantages and disadvantages of a locker, but first I want to show you, and also why you should have it in the front or the rear, or what depends on what you're going to do. So, you know, opinions are just half a dozen opinions for half a dozen people, but I'll give you some common sense. But what a locker does is uh, first listen to the wheel. You hear that ratcheting me mechanism? What happens is when one wheel loses traction, both wheels lock up. A posi won't do that, so I'll show you what it does. And you see it drove off the jack no problem and uh, that's really what it does because a posi will give you traction in both wheels but it won't lock up it won't drive off the jack like that if you got one wheel up in the air that wheel will spin if you got an open end one wheel will spin even with the lowest traction now the El Camino has got a posi in the back but uh, it wouldn't do that but I want to talk about what you got for um, now, in my opinion, for my uses, I just only want to have a locker in the back. I don't want to have one in the front. The one reason is, there's a couple reasons. Well, one reason is, the front is less strong than the rear. So, if you have a full-time locker in the front, it would be easier to break something, especially if you put oversized tires. Now, these are just slightly oversized. They're not really that oversized at all. They're very little oversized, but uh, the... Uh, you want the bigger tires it's much easier to break something in the front with a full-time locker now the advantage of having a lock rate locker though is that it's cheap it's only a couple hundred bucks uh, a little over two hundred dollars um, I got mine from roadless gear up in Montana I just ordered there those guys are good they know what they're doing they got fast shipping and stuff but uh, other places you can get them I thought they had about the best prices though so um, now the thing is with an air locker you're running over a thousand dollars that's the ideal situation because you can only lock it up when you need it and you can use one wheel as an anchor so if you have one wheel that is um, on a rock or something or well like like for instance some situations if it's really slippery out you don't want the whole back end sliding or the whole front end sliding off this side because both wheels are losing traction and that is really why, in a lot of situations, you don't want a locker in the front unless you can turn it on and off. Because if the front loses traction, both wheels, the whole front end, you'll have no steering. Whereas the back, if the back fish teals out this way, um, you can counter steer and steer into the direction of the skid and keep control. But if the front loses traction, so that's where you might have a locker say in mud or snow or sand or something usually that would be snow um, you'd have a problem actually way back when when they first came out the Nissan uh, Pathfinder they were um, uh, having those back here in the USA they had posi traction in the front not even lockers and they were calling them ditch finders because when you ran around a corner and you had a four-wheel drive in the snow if you had great traction with two wheels driving the front and the and back, right, both having posi, but when the front wheels lost grip, you didn't have one wheel spinning, you had two wheels spinning, the other one wasn't acting as an anchor, so you went right off into a ditch, you know, when you're going around a corner. Now, what you do, if you have a locker in the front, if you do decide to uh, have a locker in the front, and uh, you're driving in the snow, you would want to lock one hub right have one lock one lock and the other one unlocked because this way one wheel can act as an anchor one wheel will work like an open end and the other one will stay locked all the time so if you get the situation where it's like extremely and, and that'll be a little bit better than having an open end 
but that's how you would drive a locker, a full-time locker in the snow if you're running a four-wheel drive. You really want to have one wheel locked and the other one not. Um, but you know, I kind of opted for not bothering with that because I don't think it's going to give you that much more traction. And um, you know, maybe I will put it in someday, but I'm not really too. I don't know if I really need it that much. Um, and uh, the other thing is, say like you're going up a hill. That's usually where you need a lot of traction, right? You don't need so much traction going down the hill. You know, <laughs> it's not so bad. If you're going up a hill, you need a lot of traction. And what happens is you're going up a hill, most of the weight's on the back. And that's where, you know, if you got a locker in the back, that's, it's more advantageous. But, you know, opinions are, but, you know, if you're, like, actually using the vehicle for, like, trails, rock crawling, or whatever, you know, you're doing something more serious with it, having lockers all around would be better. But for most people, probably just a locker in the back would be okay. It would be all right with just a locker in the back. You know, the two, two main reasons is if you have larger tires on it, the locker in the front can really strain the components more than the back. The back, the back axles are stronger. You got like steering, steering knuckles inside here, more stuff to break. So if it locks up all of a sudden, there's something else to break. Here you just got a straight axle on the back. It's it's stronger. Plus, if even if it did break, it's a lot easier to re freaking replace than a lot of some stuff that's up in the front. The other thing is, um, uh, if you're in snow, you got to remember to keep one wheel unlocked because if you lose traction going around a corner with a locker, it, you'll have like no steering. You'll be like like on sheer ice. It'll just it'll go right off the freaking side. The other way, like having one wheel unlocked works as a anchor. And you can just leave it like an open end, too. Actually, you do have a lot of traction even with not having lockers if, for instance, you know, this car is like, this Jeep is actually a right-hand drive. If you really finesse this brake while you're using the gas and you're doing, you know, you're doing this with the brake, uh, a lot of times that almost works like, um, uh, ABS or a traction control or something like a traction control device and it will you can almost get out of that situation by finessing the brake clutch and the gas at the same time even if you have no lockers but I do like the locker in the back though because it does give me you know absolute traction if you throw some chains back there you know you're not going to feel them as much in the back chains than you would on the front on a steering and uh and you notice like when I was spinning the wheel you probably heard the clicking noise there's not too much clicking noise because um, I use royal purple or red line oil and I'll show you what that is actually you don't want to use standard gear oil you want to use some really good shit yeah I used uh, royal purple actually in all the differential the trans tr transmission uh, transfer case but um, if you have that clicking noise and you're also sometimes you'll hear about the old full-time locker the lock right you'll it'll be skipping around on you the rear end will be on or you'll hear the higher tires chirp actually if you use this stuff those ratchets work a hell of a lot smoother this stuff is probably all right too this is some wall actually walmart gear walmart has some pretty they'll make your own oil that's actually this it actually is refined in good standards but i wouldn't consider this um this isn't bad though, it's a synthetic, but uh, this is what you really want in that. You want something like that. You want a top of the line. The one that even has the friction, or if you don't have that, add that friction modifier to it. The one that they use for the clutches on the uh, posi tracks and stuff like that. That'll quiet down those ratcheting mechanisms a lot. So, uh, so again, you know, if you're gonna get a locker, you pretty much, you know, if you're not gonna really go balls to the wall with some freaking crazy off-road shit. A rear locker is plenty. The full-time locker is okay. It's not going to give you all that weird um, stuff when you're going around corners. Like, I don't feel hardly anything. I hardly notice anything. Even in this little Samurai that's got no little hardly any weight in it, I hardly notice this locker that much at all. I hear some clicking once in a while, but that's about it. And that is because, like I said, I used a real high quality gear oil. But, uh, 
that's about all you need and uh, you know you also like I said if you know how to finesse that brake and you know say you got an open end in the front and a locker in the rear you want to you finesse that brake um, it can almost work like a traction control device and you'll get out of it you'll get out of it so anyway I just figured I want to push pass on these tips because you can do stuff because there's a lot of high dollar freaking marketing stuff out there like you, know, you need air lockers in both front and rear you need this you need that you need this and you know the more you add the more something else can break actually this samurai or this is actually an asian model jimmy 1300 if you keep it basically stock it really doesn't break that easy if you freaking start messing around with really really big tires and uh jacking it up and you put a lot of strain on all the components and then you gotta you basically don't have a samurai anymore but i found out this damn thing um well, mine actually is three and a half inches shorter, wide, uh, more narrow. It's the same knit length. You meant it's the same distance this way, um, but it's three and a half inches more narrow than the stock Samurai. Although I got Samurai pumpkins in it, uh, the axle's a little shorter. So the thing is, what I'm saying is, it's so small in width and and length that it doesn't get hung up that easy. It fits through trees really easy. So, you know, keeping it really small and tight and light like this, it works just like the old Willys Jeep, which works fine. That's why stock isn't bad either. So, you know, and actually if you really went off-road with this, you'd get some, uh, you fit some tractor tires about this size, and uh, she'd be all right. But anyway, I just figured I'd pass it on uh, because if you're undecided about what you want to add on to the Jeep, just the rear locker, lock right, with that per royal purple, that should suffice for just about every situation there is, you know, unless you're getting really extreme, but uh, for most people, hey, a little more than 200 bucks, and I did do some videos on how I installed it, it was a four-part series, um, try to be as thorough as possible, and, um, took my time filming the shit out of it so it can probably help you out a little bit if you've ever tried to do this actually the way I did it when I put it in number one golden rule is I marked everything I took pictures of everything and I put everything back to where it was with the torque specifications locked eye blue and um, counted the number of turns for the bearings you know the, you know the side bearings the whole nine yards so I didn't screw with nothing you know what I mean <laughs> Usually you're safe when you do stuff like that, a little common sense, right?